Welcome to Sacred Hearts Parish. Although we cannot gather physically, we can gather together spiritually. We are glad that you are with us today. During this Easter season, we are invited to listen to God's word, rejoice in the resurrection, and to be Christ's presence in the world. Together we celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Father Joe. Our mass intention is for Sacred Hearts Parish and for all those affected by the coronavirus. We may think that those close to Jesus knew exactly what to do when we have no longer physically to them. They didn't. They saw how we had suffered and they were afraid. We did not always know what to do either. However, through prayer and reflection, we can be sure Jesus is willing to guide us on the right path. Do we trust in Jesus and lead the way? Let us now pray together, asking our loving God to hear our prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather today on this Memorial Day weekend, we gather today especially honoring and remembering all of our servicemen and women um, who have served our country. And we also uh, let us begin by acknowledging our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. as he promised until the end of the world 
his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord. first letter of Peter. Beloved, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer, as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as an intriguer. But who is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed but glory God because of the name. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to God. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you and you gave them to me. They have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you because the words you gave to me I have given to them. 
and they accepted them and truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, once again, happy Memorial Day weekend, brothers and sisters. And today's readings, they begin with Mary and the Apostles, along with some other women and men, gathered together in communion, praying. Jesus had been taken up, he had ascended into heaven, and they gathered in the upper room and prayed together with one heart, all united together. They were praying for the Holy Spirit and for direction on how to continue, what to do now that Jesus had ascended to the Father. We know that next week we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. And in celebrating, we not only remember the event that took place in the upper room where Mary and the apostles were gathered in prayer and that the Holy Spirit descended upon them with power as tongues of fire, but we also pray and ask that God may send forth his spirit upon us as well. We too need the Holy Spirit to strengthen us that when things get tough, we remember God's promises and that he says, I am with you. We need the Holy Spirit to dispel our fears and to empower us to give glory to God, so that we can share what we have been given by God, eternal life, Jesus Christ, who opens the heavens to us and invites us into his own divine life. The second reading calls us to rejoice. It says, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ. All of us, on our own, we flee from suffering. Just as most of Jesus' disciples did, they fleed in front of the cross. We need God's help to be able to enter into suffering with faith. Now during these difficult times, we have encouraged you to reach out and to contact via phone or internet people in your lives especially those whom maybe there was some difficulty between you and them, to reach out to them and to be reconciled and to share the joy and the consolation of the gospel with them. I hope you were able to do this, but perhaps some of us found ourselves unable. Some of us maybe found ourselves without the strength and the courage to pick up the phone and with humility to speak to those with charity. Or perhaps when we have reached out, that act of kindness wasn't reciprocated, but rather maybe it was met with hostility. Perhaps you were wounded, you suffered. If so, brothers and sisters, then rejoice Rejoice that you have shared in some degree in the sufferings of Christ. Loving in the dimension of suffering, in the dimension of the cross, gives glory to God. It is especially through our example of faith and trust in God in times of suffering and in times of trial that we communicate the love of God that love of God which is expressed in the person of Jesus Christ, that he came, sent to us 
by the Father in heaven, and by his life and foremost his death and passion and obedience to the Father, he showed us the great love that God has for all of us. In the Gospel, Jesus says, I have glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. And Jesus shares this mission with all of us when he says, Now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. This whole gospel is part of the priestly prayer of Christ that he continually prays for us that we may be given eternal life and strengthened by his spirit to continue his mission here on earth. Brothers and sisters, our mission is to live out the faith we have received, to praise God not only with our lips. When we began Mass today, we sang glory to God in the highest, praising God. But it is essential that we also praise God by living out our faith in concrete actions, by doing His will. There is a great example of this that I would like to focus on during this Memorial Day weekend, that of our brothers and sisters in the armed forces who gave their lives that we might be able to worship God here in freedom. They went beyond just saying that our country, the United States of America, is a great country. They went beyond just saying, we have a great country. They stood up, they acted, they spoke with their actions. They joined our armed forces and went to places of conflict. They even risked their very lives and some of them returned home wounded or they did not return at all. And so today we honor these women and men that they went beyond just words, that they said America is great by their actions and with their very lives. And so we honor them and we pray for them today. If any of you are service men or women, active or retired, thank you. Thank you not just for your service to our country, but also for the example of standing up and acting, of not only giving lip service, but of taking risks for your beliefs and convictions. And let us all pray from today until Pentecost that God may pour out his spirit upon all of us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, which are to come his body and blood given in love for us. Let us give thanks today that our churches are beginning to open up and that we can receive our Lord in his most precious body and blood. Peace and God's blessings to you all on this Memorial Day weekend. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Now with confidence and trust in our Heavenly Father, let us bring before Him our prayers and petitions. For the Church on Earth, may God increase her in holiness, we pray to the Lord. For world leaders, may God help them in their service to their people and the kingdom, we pray to the Lord. For Christians throughout the world who are suffering for their faith in Christ, we pray to the Lord. For all who are awaiting the sacraments of initiation, William, Janet, Lily, Andrea, Ellen, Kenneth, Amanda, Matthew, and John, that they will all continue to grow in knowledge and faith of our loving God, we pray to the Lord. For doctors, nurses, first responders, and all those who are working to handle this health crisis, may they be strengthened by God during this time of great need, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially remembering Earl Corr, Dana Fields, Janice A. Buckley, Kathy Early Casey, Dorothy Druggan, and those who have died in service to our country, may they rejoice in the light of God's glory, we pray to the Lord. For the prayers and concerns listed in our parish book of intentions, and also those we silently call to mind, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, accept the prayers offered by your people gathered here today, and may you grant them in accordance with your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for I will of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devoutedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And the Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity to your Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the clergy, religious, and all your faith-filled people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. They were the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse. The Blessed Apostle, St. Patrick, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Thank you very much for being with us today to celebrate Eucharist in our parish community. As we all know, uh, this is the weekend that churches can open up again to celebrate Mass in our churches. And at Sacred Hearts Parish, we chose to do that uh, at Sacred Hearts Church this weekend. And the next weekend, we'll resume our normal Mass schedule as usual. Uh, we all should know that Cardinal Sean has continued the dispensation from weekly mass attendance indefinitely. So by all means, my friends, do not feel at all any pressure to come to church for, for mass. Your health is paramount. Your safety is paramount. And we'll continue to offer online masses for the foreseeable future. So you'll always be able to find a, a mass recorded or a live stream from our parish community through the coming weeks. So please feel free to continue to make that your weekly spiritual enrichment. Uh, so thank you very much for your presence here and for being with us today. As Mass concludes today, after final prayer and hymn, we invite you to stay with us through the end of the video. After Mass, we have a little treat. We've interviewed three individuals who are going to share their service to our country journey. One, Kristen Messer, a nurse serving now in Afghanistan. Secondly, Leo Byron, a veteran of World War II. That's not right. Um, is, he, is he Korea? He's not I, think that old. Korea I think it was Korea. Okay. Yeah. Well, just a veteran. Yeah, just a veteran. Okay. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, just. Uh, yeah. 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 We we're very blessed this weekend to interview three individuals from our parish community who have served or are serving our country. Kristen Messer, a nurse currently serving our country in Afghanistan. Leo Byron, who served our country uh, in the military. And finally, uh, Father Ben Latran, who is currently a army chaplain, a Catholic army chaplain serving Fort Sill in Oklahoma. So please stay and really experience their testimony of service to our country. 
And finally, there'll be a, a little short video where I should share a few words myself about where we are in our journey here in the parish after our weeks of quarantine, and also some of the particulars of the guidelines we're following here to assure you of we're doing all our best to uh, get back in worship in our churches and how we're taking care of our community. And also, if you do come to church in the coming weeks, how things will be different here in the church. Seating, communion, safety. So please stay with us through the whole video today. We want to get this information out to all our parish communities so that we're all well-versed in terms of what we're doing here. And when you do return, a few weeks, later on the summer, that you'll have an awareness of what we're doing here and, and the flow and the prayer form we have here. But God bless you all. Thank you for your wonderful support. Father Joe and I appreciate your support. I thank all the staff here who has been so supportive of us the past weeks and now in the coming weeks we change gears quite often as we try our best to adhere to all of the state and church guidelines to worship and celebrate well in our churches here in Bradford and Groveland and to be aware of God's many blessings. Next weekend is Pentecost, a wonderful awareness of the Spirit in our midst to bring about renewal and hope and joy. Whether you're with us in church or at home, experience that Pentecost Spirit love and know that we here at Sacred Hearts Parish are full of that love, full of that Spirit to live our Catholic life well and have a strong Catholic community. So God bless you, my friends. Stay well, stay healthy. And thank you for your support in all you do for Sacred Hearts Parish. Let us pray. Hear us, O God, our Savior, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole Church what has already come to pass in Christ her head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Kristen Messer. I'm a Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Air Force. And I'm right, right now I'm down in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, and at 9.30 this morning, we are headed to the Middle East. I'm with a medical unit. I'm the chief nurse um, of my medical unit back home. And I will be the same when I go over there. 
So our job is to uh, take care of patients and make sure they get the injured, get on the um, aircraft safely. Um, and then they're transported from where we'll be in the Middle East to um, Landstuhl Air Base and Medical Center in Germany, and then they'll come home. Um, so while they're with us, we try to take the best care that we can with them. Um, a couple of questions that were asked of me were, what does this mean to me? Um, I joined in about 2003 when the war started. Um, I went to Boston College, it's a Jesuit school, and they instilled to us to give back. So when I saw all that, I figured, what can I give back being a nurse? And that was to you know, help this country that I love, and I joined. And it's been almost 20 years now, so another year or two, and then I will retire. Um, but it's taught me a lot, uh, humility, selflessness, um, service before self, giving back to a great country and to protect our religious freedoms. And I'm finding that that's what most of these wars are all about, um, you know, religious wars. So I'm thankful for what we have been given in this country and we can protect those. Um, while I'm deployed, it gives me a great time to reflect on my spirituality and how grateful I am and um, how lucky we are in our country. And with Memorial Day coming up, um, I don't like to look at it as a, a long three-day weekend for cookouts, hamburgers, hot dogs. What it means mostly to me is thanking all those veterans who have served, but especially those who have given their life for our freedom. So I wanna thank all of those and reflect about those people during that time. And I hope everybody else does as well. So happy Memorial Day and um, I'll see you in the fall. Hello, my name is Leo Byron, and I was in the United States Army. After high school, I had a decision to make, because although we were in peacetime, 
there was still the active draft going on. But the military also gave us an option of joining the active reserves, which was, for me, a six-year commitment. So much active duty and the rest on active reserves, which was meeting once a week for training, going away to summer camp for training at some uh, place like Camp Drum. Well, to me, this country had given us a whole lot. And I felt that I owed the country something because I loved it dearly. So I went to interview at the local reserve station, which was an army unit, and I was accepted. And I signed, took the oath, and shortly thereafter was on active duty. Uh, active duty in peacetime is still combat training. You get to learn to use and train on all the weapons that the Army had to offer. The interesting thing in basic training, though, is I saw a lot of people in my unit grow up, mature, and just what pride came into them. And they were very, very fit as well. We made good friends. <clears throat> um, after uh, my training on active duty was over, I returned back to my reserve unit. In the time in the military, I made a lot of good friends. Um, unfortunately, at the time in basic training, we didn't have chaplains. We didn't even have a, a, a church to go to, which I thought was rather unusual. Um, but when I went through training with the reserves, a lot of people were closer to God because there's something about training for combat, even in peacetime, that brings you a sense of reality. And so I did my six years of, a reserve, of commitment and got some promotions along the way and was a, a non-commissioned officer when I finished. And I took away two things from that. I finished what I started, and I gave back to this country I love and to the man upstairs my time thanking him and thanking this country for what it gave us all and still gives us all. And I do it all over again. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Fort Seal, Oklahoma. Happy Memorial Weekend to all of you. First of all, I want to thank Father John for offering me the opportunity to send this message to all of you. As we celebrate Memorial Weekend, I want to thank all the men and women who serve our country uh, distinctively uh, with honorable and those who um, wounded because of the service. Uh, uh, and I also pray for those who laid out their life as an ultimate sacrifice for our democracy, for our freedom, uh, for liberty, and for the right of religious uh, practice. Every day, I look at my cross and I thank God for calling me to serve Him, to serve the church, and now in a very, very unique way to serve our country and to serve the men and women who serve in the armed forces, and namely the army. Every day, this one reminds me of the first amendments, freedom of conscience, freedom of belief, freedom of practice, of religious belief that you see fit for yourself. Uh, I work with different people, different soldiers, uh, soldiers from different uh, walk of life. Whatever country you can think of in the world, we have soldiers from those countries. And we also serve uh, different religions. People don't believe in God, people believe in God and anything in between. They are always welcome to talk to the chaplain. And it's my honor to be here to serve them and to uh, pay forward for all the blessings that God has given me in this life. 
and I could never thank God enough. I never thanked this great nation that adopted me and gave me so many opportunity and so many uh, blessings. And now to serve and to be able to pay forward is a blessing in itself. God bless you all, my friends. Have a wonderful Memorial weekend. Enjoy and give thanks to God for those who serve our country and pray for those who struggle and command all the loving souls and those who laid out their life for our country. Command our gentle soul, loving soul to the loving God. Blessing and peace to all. Happy Memorial weekend. Greetings everyone, Father John Delaney here from Sacred Hearts Parish in Bradford, Groveland. And I'm here this day to say hello. It's been a long, late winter, springtime of uh, quarantine and challenging times for all of us. We pray for all those who passed away these recent weeks and who are sick and for all the families who are in distress and know that uh, Father Joe and I are praying for you and with you uh, each day for your well-being. Uh, as you all know, we received word this past uh, Monday that uh, churches may now open in Massachusetts, and we're overjoyed to hear that news. It caught many of us off guard. We thought through the astros and insights that we'd be waiting a few weeks before this could happen. So we are receiving all the guidelines and restrictions to open the churches, and I have chat with our staff here, our, our wonderful staff at Sacred Hearts, and we've had Zoom meetings this past week. We met uh, midweek in the church to reflect upon what we need to do, and here it is. I'm taping this on Thursday morning. We're going to meet again tomorrow to really review our uh, procedures. And it is my hope and prayer that we will open up this weekend. And uh, upon receiving this uh, video this weekend, you'll know that the case. Um, and so I just want to go over a few things uh, here. Uh, first of all, I want to reassure you that uh, the church has been cleaned thoroughly and we'll have uh, staff and volunteers present with us throughout the weekend who will clean common areas and to really assure that uh, bathrooms are cleaned and just to make sure everybody have that sense of well-being uh, as they come to church. But also we all know that Cardinal Sean has uh, extended the dispensation from Sunday Mass obligation. So please, please take care of yourself. Make your own decision uh, when you would like to return to uh, church to join us in a live Mass in our churches. So there is no obligation, no pressure. Each person, each family decides it themselves. Here in the parish, through the goodness of Scott Ness, our music director and our staff, Betty and others, we're gonna to continue to offer some online mass um, opportunity. A week or two ahead, uh, recorded masses, we've done the past nine weeks. And then beyond that, we'll have a live streaming of one of our masses uh, for the weekend so those can still feel connected to us even if you choose not to return uh, to the church. So again, uh, Cardinal Sean has reiterated the uh, dispensation for mass attendance uh, indefinitely. So please be aware of that and make your wise decision whether you return now in a few weeks, late summer, what is best for you, that's your choice. Uh, well, a few things if you do come to church this weekend. First of all, we all know the importance of wearing a mask. As you enter the church, you must wear a mask, okay, for your safety and the safety of those around you. Uh, secondly, we all know if you're shopping in local food stores, elsewhere, the, the importance of social distancing. Uh, six feet. So be careful that you have that six foot circle around you and do your best to maintain that as you approach the church, enter the church, and so forth. As you come to the church, you'll be greeted by volunteers, by staff this weekend, 
who will seat you accordingly in the church. You may not be able to sit in your regular seat because of the way we've reconfigured the church so that we can abide by all the restrictions and all the guidelines we have to keep all of us safe. So please cooperate with the staff and with the volunteers this week and the coming weeks. So we're, we're in no rush. We come in, we sit, and we go forward, okay? Uh, there'll be directions of communion, and of course there is no missiles in the pews. There is no um, congregational singing. Those are the highlights. But uh, upon the completion of this video, my video, uh, that there'll be an extended video about taking you through the whole process of coming to Sacred Heart's Church, entering the church, where you sit, mass, participation, communion, and exit. So again, we're trying our best to inform you and educate you of what to expect to come here. So after I share my words with you this morning, stay on for a few moments to watch a video produced by our Scott Ness and uh, staff to help you see. And the more you are aware of that, there'll be less confusion and less um, challenging moments <clears throat> during our masses this weekend. So again, I want to thank you all for your wonderful support these past eight, nine weeks. Your uh, personal words to me, your words to our staff. Uh, we've tried our best to stay connected to you these days uh, via online notices, weekly constant contacts. That will continue for a while as we try to get out uh, up-to-date news. As you all know, things change very quickly day by day, and sometimes Friday night when I'm writing my letter to you, and Saturday morning when it gets published for the parish on our website or email, constant contact, you know, that's as up-to-date we can get. Our bulletin often is due early in the week on a Tuesday for that coming weekend, and by Friday sometimes that news is old news, and so we try to do our best to inform you. So thank you for your support, your friendship. Thank you for your financial support. The parish is maintaining our financial well-being thanks to your goodness. I've been so blessed to receive your financial support through the, uh, the, the weeks, uh, either getting ahead, catching up. I know many people have lost their jobs, and it's understood. You do your best to help us maintain parish life here. And we're a strong Catholic community here, St. Patrick's Church, St. Patrick's Church, overall community. We have a great staff. Our school is doing so well with our young people. Our faith formation program has done so well this winter under Miss May's um, leadership. And uh, I'm looking forward to First Communion sometime this summer, early fall, confirmations in the fall, all the baptisms and the weddings that are uh, being rescheduled or redefined, a lot going on. But that's who we are. We're trying our best. So uh, thanks very much for listening to these few words. You can stay uh, following my words to uh, watch the video of Life at Sacred Hearts Church this weekend, the coming weekends, and I uh, hope to see you soon. But always call us if you have any questions or concerns or can help you. And uh, God bless you. Stay well, stay healthy, and peace. Welcome to Sacred Hearts Parish. As we prepare to reopen our parish in phases, we want to share some procedures that will keep you and those around you safe during Mass. Please remember that Cardinal O'Malley has extended the Mass dispensation indefinitely. So if you fall into an at-risk category or do not feel comfortable joining us at this time at church, please consider taking part in our Sacred Hearts online liturgical celebrations or the Masses offered on Boston Catholic TV. For those who will join us at Sacred Hearts Parish, we offer these safety suggestions and procedures. Before you arrive for Mass, we ask that you wash your hands for 20 seconds at home. For those who are five years old and up, face coverings are required while on church property and during Mass. Please consider bringing your own hand sanitizer that you can use during Mass, especially immediately prior to Communion. Please do not bring any items that contain bleach, as this will damage the pews. When you arrive at church, if you are five and up, please place your mask over your face as you are exiting your vehicle. Please arrive 15 to 20 minutes before Mass 
so that you have time to enter the church and be seated by our ushers. Our parish staff and ushers will seat everyone, mindful of social distancing requirements. Members of a single household may sit together. When you enter church, you will see that we have marked off benches to be closed and not used, as to assure safe social distancing. You may be sharing a pew with another individual or individuals. However, a social distance of six feet is required between individuals and households. This has been anticipated and will be respected. There will be no seating in the choir loft. Please keep your face mask on for the duration of the liturgy. There is to be no physical contact between households at the sign of peace, nor will there be holding of hands during the Lord's Prayer. Baskets will not be passed during the offertory. You will be able to place your weekly offering in a basket as you exit the church. However, we strongly encourage online giving, which is easily available on the parish website. Cardinal O'Malley has mandated that communion is not to be offered on the tongue under any circumstance for the time being. The precious blood will not be offered to the congregation. The use of personal hand sanitizer before communion is strongly encouraged. There will be a single communion line in the center of the main aisle. Ushers will invite parishioners to go to communion bench by bench. In order to facilitate movement, we ask that everyone in the bench join in the communion line, including children who may not yet receive communion. In this way, the flow will be from the bench to the single line in the middle aisle, and then return to the bench by the side aisle. Parish staff and ushers will facilitate this process. When your pew is ushered to receive communion, stand up and move to the center aisle. Please maintain social distance between you and the communicants in front of you and behind you. When you step up to the priest to receive communion, please keep your mask on. After the priest has offered you communion in the hand, step to the side, remove your mask, and receive the precious body of Christ. After you have received the Eucharist, put your mask back on and return to your seat by the side aisle. After the final blessing, parishioners will be invited to be seated. Parish staff and ushers will dismiss pews in an orderly fashion, starting from the rear of the church. Those in the center section and side pews closer to Carlton Ave will be invited to leave via the bell tower door. Those in the center section and side pews closer to the grotto will be invited to leave via the main center outside door. If someone requires the use of the elevator, please make this known to a member of the parish staff or an usher. You must exit your pew when prompted. Private prayer is not available after Sunday Masses to allow the church to be reset and disinfected for the next Mass. You can drop your weekly offering in the designated baskets as you leave. Clergy will not shake hands at the doors, but will be present to wave to you and wish you well as you depart. Please do not congregate outside, but head directly to your vehicle to allow the next Mass to start on time. We will continue to implement cleanliness and sanitization practices, including cleaning pews and all common spaces regularly. Disinfecting bathrooms, door handles, elevator, and other frequently touched surfaces occur throughout the day. These areas will also be cleaned after every mass. Parish staff and volunteers are required to wear face masks, wash their hands, and be screened for COVID-19 symptoms. You are reminded to follow CDC recommendations regarding your own health. If you fall into an at-risk category, please stay at home and join us for our online liturgical celebrations.